No, I thought you wanted to be a YouTube star. Now you're here. Now you're all shy. <laughs> ton of work to do today it's alignment day though alignment day over here with uh, mechanic Mike <laughs> today's plan is to get the alignment done on this thing now we're just doing a base alignment <laughs> we're just doing a base alignment on the car get it pretty close to straight Get it pretty close. Everyone's picking on mechanic Mike because I'm recording. So we're gonna get the we're gonna get the alignment pretty close to straight today. Did have to do a little bit of a frame pull to the actual K member on the car because it was it was bent back a little bit from from the hit. Uh, the control arm is now forward quite a bit, so we should have a lot of adjustment there. Today's video is gonna be about how to properly do an alignment on this vehicle. It's a lot of work and it's it's a pain in the butt. So let's get to it. Now this fender isn't on all the way fully yet but it, the gap here is a, it was touching the fender when I put it on this morning now it's, it's a lot further away you can see how far away from the body it actually is now it's a lot better as far as camera wise it's still leaning in and we measured the knuckle from from the wheel to the knuckle it's tighter here than it is on the other side which tells us that the uh, knuckle is actually bent on this thing so that's why the alignment's not going to get done fully we're going to get it really close i'm going to do some more work on the car put it back together and then bring it back for a final uh, alignment when we get there right now we're just going to switch out this uh, outer tie rod the upper ball joints on this car and then start the alignment process. Uh, luckily, I don't have to do a whole lot of it. Mecha mechanic Mike's gonna do most of it, right Mike? Come on, get off your phone, let's get to work. Fresh inner tie rods on, fresh upper ball joints on with cotter pins, look at that. <laughs> and uh, just wrapping it up. And then we can start on uh, adjusting in the rear. The first major thing, and I know this because I used to do alignments for years. First major thing you want to do is get all the air pressure right on every single tire before you do an alignment. Key. Another key thing before we actually start the alignment process is we got to make sure that this car is actually sitting straight on the coilovers. So we adjusted the front and now we're just measuring the back here to make sure. A better measuring point is probably underneath the rocker, rocker to the to the main. We know that the rack is level, that's for sure. So if we measure from the plate to a point on the ground and then compare it to the other side, I think we get a better measurement. The car itself is looking like it's pretty, pretty close to a level there. So I want it just a tad higher on the driver's side because yeah. when I sit on it, it's obviously going to send down. My, what do you think is the number one tool for a race car? If you had to guess the number one part and tool that you put on a race car, what, what do you think it is? <laughs> Zip ties. It's the number one tool to have on a race car, Mike. I bet you didn't know that. Back in the day, there used to be a string that we ran across, Mike. It used to be. Back in the day, we had a string because they weren't uh, sensor reading heads. Um, so we had a string that we had to attach from one side to the other and back and it was a pain in the butt but I could do back in the day might I could do an alignment in about 30 minutes with the strings if I hustled and that was like hustle so what are we doing next get in the car and back it up get in the car and back it up we gotta we gotta calibrate the sensors and you do that by moving the car back, hitting the green spot, and then moving it forward, right, Mike? Yes. Yes.
Next step is to calibrate the toe, which is kind of the same thing. Got to look at that little screen and turn the wheel to the left till I hit green, turn the wheel to the right till I hit green. Now the moment of truth is how messed up is it? God dang, this is bad. So we got to adjust the caster for, well, first we got to do the back. So let's do the back first. Total toe. We're not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. bad. No, I want it closer than that. Right there, stop. Okay, that's good. Let's move to the front. Now, we got the thrust angle zero, but the toe, as you can see, it's positive, just a hair on both sides. Doesn't matter, if we keep adjusting like this, it's just gonna move the toe on this side. So this is, this is as straight it's gonna get on toe, but the thrust angle is zero. Now we just need to adjust our front, now that we have our back fairly straight in line. The camber's still just a hair off. <laughs> I'd rather see a negative camber on here, but when I sit on it, <laughs> when I sit on it, it gets a little camber. So we got the caster and the toes looking good. Uh, the only left, the only thing left to do is this camber. Uh, I know I didn't explain very good to you guys. If, in case you don't know, if you're sitting in the car, camber is picture the wheel. Mind my dirty fingers, but picture the wheel on a car if you're sitting on it. Negative cambers this way, positive cambers this way. Caster, if you're looking at it from the side, positive casters forward, negative casters back. If you're looking at it from the side, positive casters forward, negative casters back. And then toe, sitting back on the car, is the actual toe this way. This is negative toe and this is positive toe. So the camber on the right front wheel is actually the right front wheel is in and that's because the knuckle is bent on the car, so we're gonna put the other knuckle in, on it and get that straightened back up. That's gonna affect the caster once we do that, so that'll change this. But as far as the left side, it's okay. I wish this was a little bit negative 0.1, but like I said, when I sit on it, I think it'll move. It'll move. So, and we're only focused on what it's like when I'm in the car. So I think we're okay there. So we're gonna leave it off there for now. That's a good base alignment. The back is straight, the front is really, really close to being 100%, but it's a good starting point. Next thing we need to do, take it back home, do the transmission stuff, and then uh, after that, the, and, and then after that, bring it back after I get the bumper, everything on it, full race weight, bring it back and get the heads back on it and do the final, final, fine adjustment. And that's that's what it takes to do one of these freaking cars every time I do an alignment I go through every single thing making sure that it's all perfectly straight this car itself is not straight but it's pretty close the way we have it aligned everything's pretty close so in the garage all right so what's next technically we can officially start putting this thing back together body panel wise and then we can get started on our transmission lines route those and get that lined up and done and then wait on our valve body once that's done once i put fluid back in it it's back to the alignment shop to put on the travel limiters and finish it off after that day it's gonna be test time we're really close it's going by pretty quickly but not quick enough i'm dying to get out there but that's it for now. More to come.